What is up guys, Rick Hack is here and today we are talking about underground operations in the division. Now these operations, or as they're better known, the randomly generated dungeons, are a huge part of the newly added underground DLC for the division. So in today's video we are going to be discussing how to access them and everything you need to know about these operations, so let's get started. Now to access these operations, the first thing you need to do is complete a mission called Secure Quest. Quarantine Center. This is located in the Tenderloin District right beside the Meat Locker Safe House. This mission is extremely straightforward, it just has you fight some groups of enemies charging you in the same area and then culminating in a slight boss fight. After you kill the boss and complete the mission, you're going to be sent back to the base of operations to properly unlock the underground zone. This underground zone is called the Terminal and it is located in your base of operations basically if you were to keep walking straight after entering the front entrance. In this terminal area you're going to find quite a few NPCs selling very high level end game gear but you're also going to find in the back corner of the terminal the stairway down to the underground operations. However when you try to go down this stairwell you will likely be greeted with the offline notification saying that you require the underground DLC which is of course true you need to have the underground DLC to access this content. Now if you're like me and you actually already bought the seasons pass and you're thinking wait a minute don't I have the underground DLC just remember that you actually need to go and properly install the DLC it'll take just a few seconds because basically all the content was added with patch 1.3 and you'll see me do that here once you properly install the underground DLC you will be able to go right back to the game and walk down that stairway I didn't even have to restart my game now once you get down to this area, this is where you're actually going to plan your operations, where you're going to configure some aspects of your dungeons. Aside from this, there are a few more vendors. Now the very first operation you perform will be the exact same for everyone. It's just an introductory mission to let you get used to some of the mechanics in these operations. So you won't be able to change any of the factors about it. But once you complete this very first operation, you will have access to several different options that will greatly impact your dungeon. Now you'll notice right away that a lot of these options are grayed out and that you have to achieve a higher underground rank in order to access them. This is very simple, all your underground rank is is simply a new kind of level added on with the underground DLC and how you level it up is simply by playing these operations. So you do more and more underground operations and then you're just going to level up your underground rank. And then once you reach, you know, level 10 in your underground rank, you're going to get access to all of the things like difficulties, phases or modifiers that require you to be level 10 or lower. Additionally, every time you level up your underground rank, you're going to be given an underground cache. This is simply uh, something that you can open up and it gives you a random reward. Now let's go over the different choices you can make when planning your operation. Firstly, you choose the difficulty between normal, hard, challenging, and an unlockable difficulty, heroic. These difficulties are going to act pretty much the same as if you were to apply different difficulties to different missions. So if you're going to do a mission on hard, I'm sure we all know that that's very different than doing that same mission on challenging. And the same factors apply to these operations. Next, you simply get to select your phase. A phase is basically one operation. Like a one phase operation, you go in, you do a couple of objectives, you uh, fight a final boss, and you complete it. A two phase operation will simply let you do that twice before you actually complete that operation. And lastly, some of the most important customizations that you can make to your operations are the directives. These are essentially modifiers that will impact how the enemies act and certain things about the operation and having more of them on will give you better rewards. The first directive is Fog of War. The minimap is disabled. Directional threat indicators do not show targets unless pulsed or marked. Target indicators are only visible while the target is under the reticle. And you're actually going to see some background gameplay of us playing with the Fog of War directive. Definitely changes up gameplay when you have no minimap, trust me. The next directive is Mad Skills. Using a skill resets the cooldown on the other equipped skill. Using a signature skill resets the cooldown on signature skills of other group members. So that is going to significantly lower the amount that you can utilize your skills while doing operations. 
The next directive is waste not, want not. Rounds left in the magazine while reloading are lost, enemies do not drop ammo, and starting ammo count is reduced. We next have special forces. Enemy rounds may be special ammo types. The type of ammo depends on the enemy faction. So cleaners can use incendiary ammo against you when this directive is active. The last directive is sickness. Health drains at a constant rate. Lost health may be healed as normal. So you're just gonna constantly lose health while in the operation. Now remember, you don't have to select just one of these, you can put all five of them on if you want for a huge bonus to your rewards and experience. But you will notice that these actually require directive intels in order to activate. So if you have zero directive intels and you actually try to put on the fog of war directive, you are not going to be able to do that. Directive intel is simply another currency earned while doing these underground operations. I've done a few and I already have quite a bit of directive intel. But once you've leveled up quite a bit, and if you're trying to put on multiple directives at once each time you do an operation, that's really going to be what's utilizing your directive intel up. So once you've selected your difficulty, the amount of phases, and your directives, you then go out to the subway and actually start your operation. Something you should definitely be aware of is that if you have one group member kind of lollygagging in the back and you start the operation, it will leave him behind and he will not be able to join mid-progress. So make sure everyone is there in this final room before you start the operation. Now once you're actually in your operation, you're going to be faced with a number of random objectives. Sometimes you'll have to just kill enemies in a certain area. Sometimes you'll have to go and turn on a generator and then protect that generator. Sometimes you'll have to defend a JTF soldier. You have a bunch of different random objectives that you could have to do and you'll be doing them in randomized areas as well. Now while doing your operation, keep an eye out for locked doors. These doors can be opened with lock picks and actually behind them sometimes lie chests that which can reward you with high-end gear. Aside from that, the other loot that you're going to get from operations is that when you finally complete the operation, you're going to get a singleton reward for doing so, usually a high-end armor or weapon piece. You're also going to get an underground cache if you level up your underground rank. You're also going to get some loot from the boss you've killed. And at the very end of the mission, it's going to lead you to a separate room to which there's a separate chest that you can open and get yet another usually high-end reward. Now that is really everything you guys need to know about operations. The one last piece of advice I want to leave you guys with is that when you're starting up operations, you're really going to want to be leveling up your underground rank as quickly as possible. Because not only are you going to want access to all of these different options and modifiers for your operations, but you're also going to get a ton of rewards just for leveling up your ranking. Now when you're doing this, I definitely recommend doing it on hard mode. Just grind as much operations as you can on hard mode rather than doing challenging mode. Now the simple reason being is because there's a huge difference between hard mode and challenging mode. Challenging mode the enemies are actually going to be level 34 and they're basically all going to be gold health elite enemies and they are much harder to beat the challenging mode. We beat a few but they are much harder and take a lot longer than doing hard mode. So if you're just trying to grind your underground ranking as quickly as possible you can complete like pretty much two hard operations in the time it takes to complete one challenging operation so it's better to just grind those hard mode ones than to try to grind the challenging mode ones. Now of course once you level up and get better gear you can take on challenging mode but again if you want to grind for the beginning levels definitely do it on hard mode. Now that's it for the video, I hope you guys enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you want to see more Division content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at RickHackus, that's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day. Those two factors led to a lot of players becoming dissatisfied with the game and leaving it. So here we are talking about the new DLC that is just about to launch the Underground DLC and whether or not this DLC can revitalize and can save the Division.